In this example, we'll run through a mortgage calculation with all of the closing costs and extra pieces that we should consider as part of this problem. But we'll take it step by step, do one piece at a time. To begin with, the price of a condominium is $180,000, and your bank offers a 30-year fixed mortgage at 4% interest. It's a fixed mortgage, meaning that interest rate is going to stay consistent for the full 30 years. And let's say you have $32,000 available right now in cash ready to put into this house. First of all, your banker tells you to expect $5,000 in closing costs. Remember, closing costs include things like fees to the bank, taxes and other fees, inspections, all sorts of things get bundled into that. But let's say you're expecting $5,000 in total in closing costs. So what percentage down payment can you afford? And the question is, will you need mortgage insurance? Remember, the threshold for mortgage insurance is 20%. If you put down less than 20%, you'll need to pay for mortgage insurance. So to find this, if we have $32,000 available right now, and we're going to spend $5,000 of that on closing costs, so that's not going into the mortgage itself, it's not being used to pay for the house, it's just fees that we have to pay up front, the remainder will be what we can use for our down payment. So our down payment will be the difference between 32,000 and 5,000, which of course is $27,000. So the amount of the down payment is 27,000, but what we're asked for is the percentage of the down payment. So we need to know what percentage 27,000 is of the cost of the condo. So we'll divide 27,000 by 180,000. So if we divide those, that comes out to 0.15 or 15%. So the down payment we can afford is a 15% down payment, which means yes, we will need mortgage insurance. Now the good news is that over time, as we pay off more of this loan, eventually we'll reach that threshold and the mortgage insurance will drop off. So we won't have to pay mortgage insurance for the full 30 years, but just for the first few years until we reach that threshold of 20%. Okay, now that we know the percentage down payment, we can figure out what the principal will be on the mortgage. So the principal is the amount that we have to borrow. If we can put down 27,000 right now, the remainder is the amount we have to borrow. So the remainder of the 180,000. So all we have to do is subtract 180,000 minus our down payment amount, which is 27,000. So we'll have to borrow the difference, or 153,000. So that's a pretty simple calculation. We can figure out the principal, the total we'll have to borrow is 153,000. Once we know the principal, we can do the next part, which asks what's the monthly P&I, or principal and interest payment. That's the PMT in our formula. So we need the formula. This is the only part where we need a relatively complicated formula, but here's the formula for PMT. And we could avoid using the formula if we use the TVM solver, for instance, or another calculator or Excel or something like that. But for now, we'll just stick to the formula. So if we fill in these pieces, P, the principal, we know from the last part is 153,000. R, the interest rate, is 4%. So we'll type in 0 0.04. And N is 12, since this is a monthly payment, and it's compounded monthly, same thing. And then the other pieces we'll fill in. Again, R is 0 0.04, N is 12. And then T is the only new piece, and that's 30. Since this is a 30-year mortgage, we'll be making these payments for a total of 30 years. Now, let's actually go to the calculator and type this in. And to simplify this, rather than trying to type it in all at once, it's usually best to do it in pieces. So I'm going to start with the denominator here, since that's the most complicated piece. And I'll start by calculating this parentheses expression here, and then raise that to this power, and then take 1 minus that answer. And once I get that single value for the denominator, then I'll take 153,000 times this divided by the answer I just got. So I know that's a lot all at once, but if you compare this expression to what we'll do on the calculator in a second, you should see that in action. So to start, we'll take 1 plus... 0.04 divided by 12, 
and that's the part that's in parentheses in the denominator. Then we raise that to the power of negative 12 times 30. Now, you have to be careful with this sometimes. On this calculator, it shows what's in the exponent. So it shows that when I type the negative 12 times 30, all of that's in the exponent. But if it didn't show that, if it wasn't that clear, I would need to put parentheses around all this so that it is clear to the calculator that I want to raise this answer to the full value of negative 360, 12 times 30. So you got to be careful with that because if you don't include parentheses on some calculators, it'll raise it to the power of 12 and then multiply that answer by 30, which is not what we want. But once I do that, I get 0.3 roughly. And then rather than typing in that value again, I'm going to take 1 minus, and then notice on the negative key there's this answer option. So I'm going to type second answer. I could also say 1 minus, and on this calculator if I scroll up, I can select that value. Either way you do it, you should get about 0.698 for the entire denominator of the problem. So now I want to take 153,000 times 0 0.04 divided by 12. So I want this in parentheses because I'm multiplying by this whole thing. And then divided by the previous answer. And the answer I get now will be my final answer for PMT, the payment. And that's about $730. So the monthly payment amount just from principal and interest for this mortgage is $730.45. That's the amount you pay just on the mortgage itself, but there are extra payments that get folded into it. And that's what the next part of the problem will be, is adding in taxes and insurance to that payment. So now we know what our monthly payment is just for the mortgage itself. It's $730.45, but we're adding on extra payments into that monthly payment gets added property taxes, homeowners insurance, and if it's necessary, mortgage insurance, which remember from part A that yes, we do need mortgage insurance, so we will include that. So the total monthly payment, we're gonna start with 730 and 45 cents, but then we're gonna add on property taxes, we're gonna add on homeowners insurance, we're gonna add on mortgage insurance. So we have these three pieces we need to add on. The property taxes is 1.5% of the home value. And we're assuming for now the value of the home is $180,000. It may be that the value of the home is different from the price that you pay, but we won't complicate things by worrying about that for now. So we'll multiply 0 0.015 times 180,000. And that's gonna be the taxes per year so per month, we'll just divide that by 12. So calculate the taxes per year, but the monthly tax payment will be 1 12th of that. And that works out to be $225 per month. Then the homeowner's insurance is $900 per year. So we'll take $900 and divide by 12 again to get the monthly insurance cost, which works out to $75 per month. So our total monthly payment starts with $7.30 and 45 cents. We add on the taxes, $225. We add on the homeowner's insurance, that's $75. And then we add on the mortgage insurance. Now again, at some point, the mortgage insurance is gonna drop off once we've paid off enough of this to reach the 20% threshold, but Initially, at least, our monthly payment will be the sum of all of these, which works out to just over $1,000, 1070 and 45 cents. So that's the amount that we'll actually have to pay each month, and then the bank will take whatever is necessary and set it aside for the taxes, insurance, and the mortgage insurance as well. But our total payment that we will see on our statement is 1070 and 45 cents. The next question asks, how much will you pay in total in principal and interest over 30 years? So we're actually going to jump back to part C, where we know how much we pay in principal and interest. The rest of the payment that goes into our monthly payment, the taxes and insurance, doesn't go towards principal and interest. So that's not going to enter into this part of the problem. 
So we're just looking for how much we're paying in principal and interest over a total of 30 years. And this calculation is actually pretty simple. We know how much we're paying each month, and we know how many months we pay that, so we just multiply those. So if we make a payment of $730.45, 12 times a year, that'll be how much we pay in one year. And then if we multiply that by 30, that'll be how much we pay over the total of 30 years. And if you work this out, this comes out to about $263,000, $262,962. Notice how we paid more than the price of the condo itself, but that's because we paid interest on top. And we're gonna work with that in the next section. So the last question asks, how much interest will you pay in total? Knowing that we paid a total of $262,962 in principal and interest, and knowing that we paid $153,000 in principal, the difference between those two is going to be the interest. Notice that it's not the difference between the price of the condo and the amount we paid in principal and interest because some of our money went in a down payment and that is dealt with separately. So we've calculated principal and interest together, we calculated the principal on its own, and so the difference between those two is going to be the interest. So all we have to do for this part is subtract the principal and interest minus just the principal, and that difference comes out to the total of the interest itself, and that's $109,962, so about $110,000 in interest, which is a lot, but over 30 years, this adds up quickly. With that, you've seen kind of all the important parts that go into a mortgage calculation. We talked about down payment, the principal, the monthly payment, starting with principal and interest, and then adding in taxes and insurance. And then the final conclusion we got is how much we're gonna pay in interest, which is a lot, but again, this is a big purchase and it's a long-term loan. So it shouldn't be too surprising that the interest payment is fairly high.